What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla stock. I also want to talk about the overall market, which Jerome Powell just said that's very important, and what's going on with the economic calendar right now. But before I break anything down all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a few things. I'm firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed five free stocks. The offer ends in just two weeks, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market and Tesla. So to start us off, guys, we had basically Tesla's deliveries come out, and they were a lot weaker than expected. Wall Street was expecting around uh, 250,000 or so, and many analysts were predicting, pr predicting excuse me, they were predicting 240,000 or so deliveries for Tesla and things like that. Tesla only did 235,000, and as a result, that's not the best of news. So I was telling you all that there could be downside coming to Tesla, but what happened was we actually bounced in the morning. We saw Tesla pump a little bit, but this easily could have been a trap for many investors uh, because when you look at the chart, we're at critical support right now. And when we look at the four hour time frame, Tesla has a very clear looking head and shoulders developing on it. So we're barely testing 250 right now, which is the 200 EMA on the five minute time frame. So right here on the left side, I have the five minute chart on Tesla on the right side, I have the 30 minutes. And basically on the five minute, you can see Tesla's breaking below the 200. It's looking a little weaker. And we're continuing to see the market slide after Jerome Powell said a couple of things. Now, Powell really didn't say much. He just said a couple of sentences. And he basically said that the labor market is still kind of strong. The Fed is committed to doing their job. And he mentioned that uh, there's still work to be done. That's pretty much all he said. He didn't say way too much, but that was enough to cause the market to start shaking a little bit. And, you know, when Jerome Powell speaks, the market does tend to move. The market was holding up decently in the morning, and then Powell gave his speech around that time. And this went on for a couple of hours. Uh, this went on for like one and a half hours. And finally, Powell just said a couple of things. He, he, he was very brief. He didn't really say much, but he did mention the fact that there could be economic contraction coming. There's potential pain coming. He just like very briefly said that. He implied that. And that's pretty much it. He just repeated the same things. For the most part, he didn't say much, but there were a couple of things said. Now we have Barr from the Fed speaking. Then we have Williams from the Fed speaking later on today. And the market is slowing down so far. So now on SPY, we're going to talk about SPY in a few minutes, but I want to first talk about Tesla. We have a very clean looking head and shoulders, right? And I'm going to bring back some drawings. So I do apologize if this is kind of like messy, but the, the truth is it's very important that we pay attention to what's going on here. So looking at the charts, we got this right here, this white line right here is our resistance zone, historical resistance, which is where Tesla rejected off of. And then on top of this, right, this line right here. So I have basically these, these horizontal lines right here, are the, basically the support zones. But then right here, we have this like slanted, uh, trend line. We have two of them, and this is basically marking the overall head and shoulders that was formed. We have the left shoulder right here. This is slanted, almost perfectly aligning with this bottom trend line, which tells us that this is a clean head and shoulders. It is quite symmetrical. Uh, it's just kind of slanted, except it's symmetrical. And then now it's looking like it's going to drag Tesla down. So Tesla's looking a little weaker now. It's very important to note this, and the trend lines are aligning quite well. I also want to add that the five minutes looking very bearish right now. We just broke below 250 and Tesla's continuing to sink to lower levels. And now we're about to test our 30 minutes 200 EMA at 249.2. So overall, I mean, if we end up closing below 250, that would be a, quite a bit of a bearish signal, in my opinion. That would signal that there's more downside potential for Tesla. Tesla's looking weak right now. The 30 minutes of the four hour has a head and shoulders. The bears look like they have a little bit more control, and that makes a lot of sense because of the fact that deliveries were just not that great. So be on the lookout for that. So now I'm just going to switch over to just one screen and talk about the other tickers. SPY, in essence, is not looking that great on the four-hour charts. We're barely testing 425 as support, and we have a head and shoulders that could play out. So there could be a little bit more downside coming, but like I told you guys earlier, I don't expect like way more downside. I don't expect SPY to crash all the way down to like 400 flat. I believe that... Uh, this thing is trying to base close to these like lower 420s. Uh, if we end up failing to hold 425 for now, then 424 is going to be the next support, which is on the table. That's this uh, support right here. If that fails us, then, you know, it is possible for us to get very close to about 422. That's going to be completely fine. And like I said before, I mean, I don't really see the market crashing insanely hard from here as of right now. 
I still think the market's going to try to base around this level, at least temporarily. And I think that things could still change. Now, for the time being, however, we are looking more bearish. So just be prepared for more potential downside. Uh, I also wanted to add that the IWM is looking weaker. This is still selling off. It actually sold off quite aggressively as the bonds are continuing to soar. We actually broke our low. So we could see 172.5 on the IWM. Apple was holding up very, very nicely, but now it's starting to look a little weaker. We got this rejection right here off our 50 EMA. And on the five minute time frame, the same thing happened. Uh, we're going to be testing 172.8. If that fails us, we could see Apple sink a little bit lower <laughs> towards about 172.2. Now we have this head and shoulders right here. So we're going to be watching this. 200 EMA down here, so watch that very carefully. As far as NVIDIA goes, we had a very, very nice pump on NVIDIA, but NVIDIA is forming a slight head and shoulders right now, so there is a risk of downside towards this 441 area if it ends up breaking below 442.5, so there is a risk of more downside on NVIDIA, at least for the very short term, but for the much larger you know, trend, we're still looking a little decent on the much bigger time frames because we have this nice uptrend right here, uh, even if it does sink towards like 430, like I was saying earlier, it could still be on an uptrend. So just keep that in mind. But for now, for the much, much smaller time frames, we do look a little bit more bearish. For the QQQ, we're going to be watching 358 as support. That fills us, then we have 357.5. If that fills us uh, at 357, then we have potentially 356 coming as support. So the QQQ is looking a little weak right now. We're going to be watching 358 as support. And then if not 357.5, then 357 are going to be the next levels. Looking a little bit weaker right now. And this could be, you know, continually, continually dragged down by the market and also like the Teslas out there. So it's very important to watch that. As for Tesla, Tesla's sinking like a rock, guys. Now we're at 249. It's actually starting to break down. It looks more bearish. So be very careful. Uh, this was what I was talking about earlier. It's just that it didn't happen immediately. We actually got a pump first. This was just another liquidity grab, another shorting opportunity for the shorts. And they also did this to screw over a lot of retail investors who were shorting from the very beginning. But now Tesla's looking weaker, so it's very important to note this. I want everyone to be prepared for what's about to come. Anyways, looking back at the charts, uh, Tesla's looking weaker. We still have this head and shoulders, so make sure you guys are prepared for this. And make sure you are ready for what's about to come. So I just wanted to warn you guys about this. Um, if Tesla manages to get back above 250 and we break above 254, we could turn bullish. I want to see it hold 254 to turn bullish, but as of right now, it hasn't done that. And we're barely testing 249. And if that you know continues to fail, then Tesla has the potential to come all the way down back down to like 247.5, potentially even 244 below that. It looks more bearish for now, so just watch this trend line very carefully. Watch the chart very carefully. Just know that Tesla's overall formation is not looking the strongest, and we're just going to be very patient with this nonetheless. The daily on Tesla finally is still favoring the bears a little bit more. If you look at the daily, we'll see we're still, we haven't gotten a bullish crossover on the PPO, and, there, and the 200 EMA is at 230, so be very careful, guys. And with that said, I just want to thank you all for listening. All right, so I'll see you guys very soon for the final video of the day. Hopefully, this intraday video update was helpful. I'll see you all very, very soon. Thank you, and peace out.